Hi, this is Tammy McClish. Let's take a look at radiographic critique. Okay, so let's take a look at some x-rays. This is a patient who was in for a chest x-ray, and this is a properly positioned PA chest x-ray. So the very first thing I do when I take a look at a chest x-ray is I quickly want to scan the image. So I'm going to tell the patient to take in a big breath, blow it out. Take in another big breath and hold it. Shoot the picture and then say, don't move. Because then you're going to look at the image real quick to make sure that it does not need to be repeated. So I want to make sure I have a little bit of the air-filled trachea. If I'm taking a picture of a pediatric child, I would want more air-filled trachea. I want to make sure there's a little bit of the apices above the clavicle. I want to make sure the costophrenic angles are on. I want to make sure that the scapula are pulled away from the chest field. And I want to make sure that the heart shadow is properly aligned and it's not going to be obliqued. I definitely want to take a look at my sternoclavicular joints to make sure that they are even on either sides of the vertebral column. So you want to be able to do this very quickly. Okay, this is a chest x-ray with some problems. Number one, we have cut the apices, we've cut the bases, and you can also see that the patient is rotated. The reason that they're rotated is because when you're looking at the sternoclavicular joints, you can see that they are not the same distance away from the midline of the x-ray. So the patient has what's called a rotated thorax, and they also have inadequate anterior arm ro location, rotation because you can see the scapula on the borders inside the lung fields. So there's quite a few things that are going wrong with this. The other thing is that the x-ray is very dark, so that needs to be fixed also. Very quickly, I can see that the patient's humeri are elevated because the clavicles are elevated. So this is a patient that came in and they grabbed the chest chamber and they grabbed it from up top. When you are doing that, you are not getting a good look at the apices. So make sure that the patient's hands are on their hips, shoulders are rotated forward. They are not holding the top of the chest chamber. This is a patient that has a tilted mid-coronal plane. So what you need to do is when you look at the chest x-ray, you want to make sure that the patient is parallel to the chest chamber. This is a patient who probably has a big belly or big breasts, and they are leaning into the chest chamber. When you do that, the ribs are going to look a little bit squared off, and then the clavicles are going to look like they're going down toward the superior manubrium. So when you are shooting a chest x-ray, walk off to the side and make sure that the patient is parallel to the image receptor. This person is leaning their upper chest into the chamber. They need to be parallel to the chest chamber. This is also a tilted mid-coronal plane, but this is a patient that is leaning away from the chest chamber. I know this because the clavicles are all the way up in the apices. So make sure that the patient is going to be parallel to the chest chamber. And this is a chest x-ray with inadequate inspiration. I know this because the diaphragm is at the ninth posterior rib. You need to have the diaphragm below the 10th posterior rib. So there's lots of things that you need to look at when you're looking at a chest x-ray. Most importantly, if I am doing anything different with my patient, I want to write it on my rack and I want to write it on my film. I always take a look at the PHS before I go to the lateral because I want to see if the patient has scoliosis. This patient does not have scoliosis. This is an accurately positioned lateral chest x-ray. But if they did have scoliosis, I would want to make sure that the sternum was lateral and I wouldn't worry so much about the posterior ribs. I want to make sure that I have the apices on, the bases on, and the costrophenic angle on. Now, this is something you're going to hear a lot of techs saying. They're going to say to you, when you shoot a chest x-ray, when you're looking at the lateral, if you can put at least two fingers between the posterior ribs, you're okay. Well, that was back when we had film, and we had a big 14 by 17 film that we would put up on a view box. 
you can't do that anymore. We have these little teeny tiny images. In fact, the one you're looking at right now is probably an 8 by 10 or a 5 by 7. So do not use the two finger rule anymore. Just make sure that you don't have a lot of separation between the posterior ribs and you will be okay. Okay, so there's a lot of things wrong with this chest x-ray. Um, this patient has um, the apices are cut, the bases are cut, the costophrenic angles are cut, and what you're seeing is the patient's arm is down and the soft tissue is across the front of the chest x-ray. So this is a very, very ugly chest x-ray, and if you told the patient not to move, then you can go in and you could fix them before you go to the next repeat. Okay, this patient has humeri that are too far down, and the soft tissue of the arm is obscuring the apices on this film. Otherwise, this film is pretty good. Okay, this is a chest x-ray where the apices are cut, but most importantly, the patient is anteriorly rotated. They have an anteriorly rotated left thorax. And I know that because I, if I could put two fingers back in those posterior ribs, if I had a 14 by 17 view box, I would see they are definitely rotated. You can see that the left lung is being obscured with the sternum, and this definitely needs to be ro ro rotated back because the patient is rotated too far anterior with their left thorax. Okay, this one is also rotated, but it's a posteriorly rotated left thorax. The back of the patient looks pretty good with the posterior ribs, but you are seeing that the right lung is anterior to the sternum, so the patient needs to be rotated the opposite direction. You're also going to want to make sure that the apices are on this film. Here we can probably move those arms up and get rid of that soft tissue. And this is a posteriorly rotated left thorax. I know that because of looking at the anatomy. It is a posteriorly rotated left thorax. Okay, this one here doesn't look too bad, but the patient has a tilted mid-coronal plane. That means that the patient is not parallel to the chest chamber. So you need to make sure the patient is parallel to the chest chamber. Now this is an accurately positioned AP chest x-ray. This is a patient that is in the ICU. When I'm taking pictures in the ICU, I want to make sure that I ask the nurse if I can move the leads out of the way, especially if I'm going to be shooting a chest x-ray for tube placement or line placement. I want to make sure that I don't have any extra wires in the way. This is an AP chest x-ray where that the apices are cut. One of the costophrenic angles are, is cut. And if we could see the sternoclavicular joints, we would definitely see that the patient is rotated. This is an AP chest x-ray where that the apices are cut but we do have a central ray that is angled caudal. I know that because the clavicles are being shown down below the apices and the ribs looked squared off. So the central ray on this was angled too far caudad or toward the feet. This chest x-ray is angled too far cephalically and it's looking a little bit more like a lordotic chest. If you see the, the ribs squared off, that means that your central ray angle is too far cephalic. Plus, this patient's apices are cut, so that needs to be fixed. This is an accurately positioned decubitus chest x-ray. You want to make sure that you have both sides on and you want to make sure that you build the patient up so that you are not seeing any sponge on the lower side of the chest that's closest to the patient's cart or their bed. You also need to know if you need to mark the right side up or the left side down. You will be told that by your department. 
This is a decubitus chest that is rotated. You're also seeing the cart pad as an artifact on the x-ray. You're seeing the right arm as an artifact on the x-ray. And you're seeing that the chest is rotated by looking at the um, anatomy on the x-ray film. This is a decubitus chest with a tilted mid-coronal plane. You need to make sure that the patient is parallel to the image receptor. So this patient's mid-coronal plane is tilted. They are not parallel to the image receptor. Here is an accurately positioned lordotic chest, which we don't shoot that often, but this is how it should look. This is a lordotic chest with insufficient central ray angle. They did not angle high enough. The angle is too low. The clavicles need to be well above the apices. Where this is a lordotic chest with excessive central ray angulation, they have angled too far toward the head or too far cephalic. And this is a lordotic chest with inadequate anterior arm rotation. The central ray angle is okay. The patient's arms are not positioned appropriately. If the apices were on and the bases were on, this x-ray would look fine. Otherwise, it is an accurately positioned 45 degree REO chest x-ray. So this is a chest oblique, 45 degrees. This is also a chest oblique, REO, but it's more like 25 degrees. This patient is under rotated. The patient is not at 45 degrees, and we don't see the apices and both sides of the chest on this image. Okay, have a good day.